okay? Sorry. Like, it's not my rule. We, we said that, I think that it'll be more distracting if you're forced to sit there for like, if you finish in like 30 minutes and you're forced to sit there for an hour. Yeah. Um, if we do like save another version, mm -hmm. an earlier version, and then want to come back to it, is it okay for us to like have another yes. Kyle window open? Yes, you can have as many Kyle windows open as you want, okay. as long as they don't contain any sort of like other code that's not the test. Right. And I'm not sure how we would check that, so just don't don't do that, please. Because I don't I don't know how that would even be helpful to you. It'd probably end up wasting more of your time. Yeah. Wait. So do you have like your backup in a different folder or what? Like how exactly? Uh. So what I would do is if I finish my first function and it works, I would just drag this folder down and make like a copy of string in there, right? And then I would keep working in this folder. And then when I finish my next function, I'd make another copy of it. Does that make sense? You just copy the folder. Yeah. Uh, there may have been one other. I think I did one other. Because XP is. is like yeah. no XP is possibly the worst operating system in the least known to man. XP? Yeah. I thought it was uh, <laughs> I don't know if any of you are around for this, but Windows ME is actually the worst. Oh god ME is but Can you do more? Yeah. So let's Oh, you want me to actually do the more? Uh, so I think that the more the more question is actually missing like a part. So the instructions, right? There should be some instruction for it. Um, I don't know if he included it, but it doesn't include like the sheet, right? Which would have like the more machine diagram on it, and it doesn't have that. So if you're clever, you can go through right and you can reverse engineer what the more machine should have looked like from the outputs that he's asking you to have, and you can complete this one. Otherwise, this one is really really difficult to complete. So shall we do mode? Yeah, we can do the mode. So mode is the one. Why is it really difficult? Okay, so the more machine is difficult because um, A, its label is hard, but B, also because, so when we give you the thing, we might give you like a sheet or we'll tell you to download something. The more machine, I think, is missing the actual diagram of the more machine. Yeah. I, I think it did come with it. It came, it comes with it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's too hard. Like, like there's a feature that I don't follow. Oh, yeah. Oh, here it is. Oh, awesome. Yeah, we're fine. Oh, here it is. Okay, yeah. So I didn't have this. But uh, you can code the more machine. Yes. Yes, you're, you're allowed to write on this. And this is pretty much all the stuff. So we're actually going to have one on. It's from 7 to 9, right? Okay, I think it's like 30 minutes for setup. Then there's like a 10 minute reading period. It's like it's like 30 to 45 minutes of setup. It's like 30 minutes for setup, 10 minute reading period, an hour to do it, and then there's like some amount of cleanup time. 20 to 30 minutes, I think, for checking out. Yeah. Uh, no, I think you have to stop. So, uh, an hour and a half, I told you, was incorrect. Is there only one question? It's like one program to write for exam? Yeah, there's only one complete program to write for exam. There will be multiple functions. All right. Okay, my battery checks out for like an hour and a half. If it pushes it to two hours, I don't know. Uh, you, you were supposed to tell your teacher if you needed like a Yeah, I know, but he said, he said an hour to an hour and a half is a good one. Yeah, so an hour to an hour and a half. Yeah, that's what you're telling me. And like, it's like, it's like, everyone should be able to have access to a mobile We're going to try and bring, we're going to try and bring like So if I'm good for like an hour and a half, it would last 20 minutes, I think an hour and a half. Just bring your, bring your charger. Okay. 
everyone just bring, why wouldn't you just bring your charger, right? Like, <laughs> but do you really want to, like, be like, oh, okay, I can finish this in the 45 minutes I have in my life? No, just bring your charger if you don't think it's going to last. Bring your charger. Okay, so we can go over the more machine one if you want, but it's pretty much going to be the same thing as your your lab. You're just going to have to write a finance issue. Does anyone have any questions? Did you you wanted to go over mode? <laughs> uh, no. I can't hear you. If you're leaving, go outside and talk, please. Thank you. Uh, so I haven't actually completed this one yet. I think, I but think the next DA is gonna do it. Like, okay, so Emily is gonna do the more machine that she can say. Oh, I thought she was just gonna do the. Uh, or if she's gonna do the same thing. Let's see. So for the final one, you would basically write. So what I have here is I have all these functions, right? Uh, for the final one, you would have your initialization. So you would put your your FSM right here, right? And all of you know how to write an FSM. You have your label, your DCB, and then your next labels. Right to each different part. Do you guys remember from that lab? So, does anyone remember how to initialize your FSM? What do you do? What's the first thing you have to do? Yeah, and so in this lab, obviously you have all these ports set up, so you're going to call those functions, right? You're going to call your initialization function. So your FSM init, it tells it, it, it has it there for you. And then what you're going to go ahead and do is you're going to go ahead and you're going to write, um, put your input, so you're going to initialize it, you do that, and you have to make sure you move your your pointer, right, to the first state, your entry state, so make sure you do that. And it says, put your input output next engine here, right? So what you want to do is you want to read from your FSM, right, call your function, which is going to be the output, and then you're going to output that to your port. So you're going to call FSM input to, I think you can go ahead and just call it. The program will have them or the sheet will have them or Okay, so it says we'll input from port B bits three to one. Access all points must be the way B Finally you will What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to call your, yeah, you're just going to want to call your output, and then you're going to call your input. So if you call it, I assume that his migrator function will actually change the port B address location. So if you call your function, it should read from that location. Does that make sense? Let's see. Yeah. So what he does here in his greater function is he actually assigns he assigns sort of like test inputs to port B. Right? So if you read from the port B data or the port B data register, then you should get those values that he's written to if you read at the proper time. And then that will be your input. So basically all you have to do is call your function here to output. Right? So you're gonna you're going to check what state you're in, right? Make sure you put the proper thing in R0, and then call your function to output to the port, right? And then you're going to...
call your function to get your inputs and use that to move to the next stage. So it's going to be something like uh, BL, what is the function name? FSM, your FSM output. I think it'll be like this. And then you're going to uh, get your input. So what you're going to do is you're going to read from your state machine, you're going to do that LDR, and then you want your... Uh, Get your, get your state output in R0, right? And then send that to your output function, right? And then you're going to read your input, so your FSM input, and that's going to give you your input in R0, and then you're going to use R0, so you're just going to use R0 to index to the next state, right? Does that make sense? Well, so if you remember how an FSM is structured, right? Your, FS, your FSM is structured some like L0, DCB, or DCB, right? Like L1, L2, so on and so forth. Right? It has all sorts of next states. And so all you do, right, is if your input is 0, you go to this state. If your input is 1, you go to this state. Right? And so that number are that number from the input will be in R0, right? And it will be formatted correctly. So R0 will have like a 0, a 1, a 2, or a 3, right? So it means that you can have four next states. And so you'll just add R0 to that offset, right? And that will take you to the right? Does that make sense? Uh, that's without me actually having done it. So I think that should work, and generally that works for all. Yes. But you're really saying we don't have to define the state machines for this test? You said it's, it's fair play. It's what? Fair play. It's fair play. It, like, you don't have to know, I don't think you have to know mealy machines. Yeah, that one you don't. Yeah. But you do, you should know more machines. I will say that for the most part, it's fairly unlikely that you'll get a finite state machine. I'm going to find that post. But, because I haven't, in the past couple, of, well, I guess, since in the past couple of years I haven't seen it, it might be more likely. But uh, they like to do more devious things than that. There are harder things than finite state machine. Finite state machine is actually really easy, right? Um, if you have, so one of the one of the very difficult things which you can uh, try attempting on your own is I remember uh, the last time I taught this class, Gerslauer uh, did finding prime numbers, and then there was another one that was approximating square roots. So there has been this trend of like. They sort of, what they do is they kind of give you a Wikipedia, Wikipedia page-ish kind of thing about how to implement some sort of mathematical formula or algorithm, and then you're expected to be able to translate that. That's usually like the hardest that it gets, and that seems to be, that seems to have taken off a little bit. So maybe expect to have, like it wouldn't, it wouldn't be too far-fetched for him to be like, oh, you know, do some sort of calculus crap, find some zeros. Right? So not too bad. We can use our own algorithms, right? Uh, if you, if it's black box input, has just right input. If you get a certain input and you give the right output, that's fine. As long as it's safe. More questions. Uh, so did someone? Did, any, did someone say something about the mode? Okay, so I, this one was kind of uh, interesting. So you remember the mode? Did anyone attempt the mode question? Yeah. No. Yeah. Sort of? You have trouble with it? Yes. Okay, so it's kind of difficult. So the way, so let's just go over how you should do things. And this is something that, this is why you should do your practice tests. Uh, Okay, so the mode gives you three functions, right? It gives you one function that, I'll just tell you what these functions are. The first function clears an array of 
of size 10, meaning that all entries are 0. OK? So it gives you, they give you, they pre-allocate an array for you, and they say, OK, if I have any array given to me, if I have a pointer to an array given to me in R0, I'm just going to set all 10 entries to 0. That's super easy, right? All of you can sort of like imagine how you do that, right? You just yeah. traverse until you hit the end, until you hit 10, and then you do that. The second one, right, what does it do? Does anyone remember? Does anyone have moto? What? It gets the highest number. Right, so it gets the highest number. So it returns the index of the, of the max in any given array. What that means is that if I have an array and it has 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, what it's going to do is if this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, this function will return 4. Right? So what it does is it actually looks for the highest, num the maximum number in the array and returns the index. Okay, it doesn't return the maximum number, it returns the index. What if there's two max? There won't be two max. The, the function states that there will be no duplicates. Okay, to make things easy for you. Easy. So does this make sense to everyone? Mm -hmm. Do you understand how to find the maximum number in an array? So algorithmically what this is going to be is this is going to be if you look in array, at an array, right, and let's say I want to find the max, and it has 1, 3, 2, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, so 9 is my maximum number, but algorithmically, it's not as easy as just, oh, that's the biggest number. What I do is I take this number 1, right, and I put 1 in, an, in like a register somewhere, right, and then I compare 1 to 3. If 3 is greater than 1, I replace this number, right? And then, I and then I increment my pointer. Is 2 greater than 3? No. So on and so forth, right? And so all I do is I, all, I have another register that keeps track of the index of the, great, the re most recent greatest number I found. So any time that I swap a value from here into this register, I put the index in here. So I move my counter into here, right? Would you just make your, would you make your counter the same as your pointer? Exactly. Yeah. So, so normally I index doing something like this, right? I do an LDR, um, R1, R0, R2, right? So R2 would be like, R2 would be my current index, right? And then somewhere down here I just increment R2 to keep moving across my array. So anytime I find that the number in this register is smaller than the number here, I copy this R2 into this register. Does that make sense? That way I record the index anytime I find a max value. Right? And then by the end, what it's going to do is it's going to put that max value into the proper register and I just return that value. Okay. So those should be relatively simple and straightforward. Does everyone understand that? Now, the last one is kind of hard. So it says find the mode, right? So how do I find the most common number? Right? Everyone remembers what a mode is? So now if I have something that looks like this. You should do a histogram, right? Yeah. So if I put one zero one three one one zero, okay, what's the mode in this? And I guess it's terminated by a negative one. So the mode here is obviously one. How do we find that out? So if I look at my previous two functions, what it does is it sets me up to use what's called a histogram. And so what I do is I make an array of size ten. And these are index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay? Everyone see that? So this is what's called, this, what I'm going to do is going to be called a histogram. So the first thing I do is I load the first element, right? And that happens to be a 1. So then what do I do? Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have this, and I'm going to zero it all out. So all of these bins, I call them bins, are zero. This is my histogram. So to access this histogram, let's say that the address is stored, I have H, and I've done an LDR, R0, comma, H. Right? Does that make sense, everyone? And say this one is my uh, array. So I've also done an LDR, a 1, equals array. Right, so now I have two addresses. So the first thing I do is obviously I load the first element from this array. 
And we're not going to worry about the end condition, right? Everyone understands it's easy for me to figure out when I'm at the end of my array. Um, so I'm going to do an LDR B, right? Remember, I'm doing a B because I'm only loading an 8-bit number. Uh, and I'm going to do an R2, R1. So now the first thing it gets is a 1, right? So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to do an LDR B, R3, R0, and R2. And then I'll explain this in a second. Add R3, 1. Okay. So what's really important is this chunk of code here. This is what we call using a histogram. So what's going to happen is when I load this 1, if I use this 1 as an index, Right, similar to how I do it on a finite state machine, what happens? What value am I going to load? I'm going to load this one, right? Does that make sense? Okay, so if I load this one and increment it by one, what happens after the first element? This becomes a one, right? After the second element, what becomes a one? The zero, the zeroth element, right? So at the end of this array, what happens? I get this is one, this is 3, and that's 1, right? And then what happens if I call my max function? What does my max function return? It'll return a 1, right? It'll return the index of the largest number in my histogram. Shouldn't it be 2401? Yeah, 2401. Sorry. 2401. So if I, if I do this, right, if I do it for the whole array, and then I call my max number, Right? and I pass it the address of my histogram, it's going to return the index of the largest number in my histogram, right? which is 1, which also happens to be the most. Can you see that that will work for any array? Yeah. So that's how you solve the mode problem. That is something that's definitely not immediately apparent to a lot of people. Right? So this is why doing a practice test is important, and also I think he mentioned a histogram in class, maybe. So given that there would be no values, it would be nine, right? Yes. It says in the but very briefly, that's how you solve mode. That's the algorithm.